This is Sridhar SN, Assistant Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, BITM Balari. Today we'll discuss on load cells. Before going through this topic, I suggest you to go through my previous video on strain gauges. You can click on the above link and also the link is given in the description. The load cells have the following types hydraulic load cell, pneumatic load cell, strain gauge load cells. Load cells are the elastic devices and can be used for measurement of force through indirect method. Use, it uses elastic material as a primary transducer and strain gauge as a secondary transducer. When the combination of strain gauge and elastic material is used for weighing is called load cell. The following factors to be considered while designing load cells using strain gauges. Stiffness of the elastic element, optimum position of gauges on element, provision of temperature compensation. When larger loads to be measured, the direct tensiles compressive method may be used, where in case of smaller loads, strain amplification provided by bending method may be used. First, we'll discuss on hydraulic load cells. The simple construction is shown in the diagram where a diaphragm is used and placed on a fluid medium. On the top of the diaphragm, a loading platform is being placed. The force of physical quantity is impressed on a diaphragm which transmits force into a liquid. Liquid medium has confined space and a preload pressure of 2 bar. On the application of the force, the liquid pressure increases and equals the force magnitude. Then the pressure is transmitted to a pressure gauge which is calibrated on force units. These cells have been used to measure loads up to 25 mega newton with an accuracy of 0.1 percent of full scale and resolution is about 0.02 percent next we'll discuss pneumatic load cells these cells operate on the force balance principle it has a simple construction as shown in the diagram where the physical quantity is being supplied through this path and a weight or a force is being applied in this direction which consists of a nozzle flapper transducer arrangement for any constant applied force the system attains equilibrium at a specified nozzle opening. The corresponding pressure is indicated by the meter. Whenever a force is being applied in this direction, which is opposed by this nozzle and the compressed air flows through this meter, which employs a nozzle flapper mechanism. And this meter is calibrated directly to measure the force. The commercially available load cells operating on the force balance principle can be measured loads up to 25 kN with an accuracy of 0.5% of full scale. Next, we'll discuss on strain gauge load cells. These cells convert weight or force into electrical output which are provided by these strain gauges 
usually the strain gauge are directly applied to the force developing device and the device is calibrated against the gauge output so these are excellent for force measuring these used in conjunction with CRO for measurement of rapid changing loads next we'll discuss the construction and working of strain gauge load cells a diagram shows a simple strain gauge load cell consists of steel cylinder on which a four identical strain gauges are mounted RG1 to RG4. The identical strain gauges attached as shown in the diagram. All four gauges are connected electrically to a four limbs of a Wheatstone bridge, which is shown in the figure B. When there is no load on the cell, all four gauges have same resistance that is RG1 equal to RG2 equal to RG3 which equals to RG4. Obviously the terminal B and D are at same potential. The bridge is balanced and the output voltage is zero which can be given by the equation one and on the application of comprehensive load to the unit, the vertical gauges RG1 and RG4 undergo the compression, that is the negative strain. And there is a decrease in resistance. The circumferential gauge RG2 and RG3 simultaneously undergo tension, that is positive strain leading to increase in the resistance the two strains are not equal these are related to each other by the factor mu which is the poisons ratio under strain the equations can be represented as these and the potential at terminal b can be given as vab Rearranging the above equation, we get the equation 3. Similarly, the potential at terminal D can be given as VAD. Rearranging the equation, we get equation 4. Change in the output voltage under load condition using equation 3 and 4, we get the above equation. Rearranging the above equation under balanced condition output voltage equal to zero. The above equation can be rearranged as shown in the equation. Further can be rearranged as this. The above equation gives voltage measured at the applied load. Uses of strain gauge load cells. So it can be used in a vehicle weighing device. It can be used in tool force dynamometers. It can be used in crane load monitoring. Thank you.